Doesn't it? And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? You know, so many times in my life, there have been all kinds of good things that happened to me, when in reality, all I was seeing on the horizon were bad things. So many times I have wondered in my despair and wondered, will it ever end? Does God really hear? Is God really listening to me? When will God answer my prayers? There have been times when I've said, you know, maybe I'm not doing things right. And that's why God isn't answering my prayers. He's kind of waiting around for me to get it right. And it's my fault he's not answering my prayers. I wonder if maybe when I wonder those things and I ask that question, does God answer my prayers and will he answer our prayers? I have to remind myself constantly God is really always with me. God will answer my prayers. I know that proof positively. I know it absolutely. And I also know that the answering of my prayers by God never depends upon my performance of his will for me. You see, the answering of my prayers depends on God's love for all of us. That's it. Wow. That's a short sermon, isn't it? I could sit down, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why are your prayers not being answered like I have? Is God really listening when you pray? You see, in our own congregation over these last years, we have seen God answer prayers. We've seen examples of how he has answered prayers in, in health matters, in recovery matters, and a whole host of other situations where we have prayed as a congregation and as individuals and we have seen the results of God's prayers. So for most of us, there is absolutely no doubt in most of our minds that God does answer our prayers. But there are those times, probably if you're like me, when you wonder. And Jesus tells us very emphatically, he says, truly, truly I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, it will be given to you. Is that really true? Well, my friends, Jesus says it. And so for me, I think it must be true. And if he says it, it must be true. Then I ask the question again, why don't my prayers always seem to be answered? You see, today's gospel talks a little bit about that. It focuses in on one aspect only of prayer and why prayers are not answered or they don't seem to be. It's called persistence. It's called sticking to it. And if we go just by this story that we read in the gospel this morning, although there are several others in the Bible you could pick from, <clears throat> It says, if I want to know why my prayers are not being answered, I have to ask, do I give up too soon? Do I become disheartened? The parable of the widow, of the widow and the judge speaks to that this morning to us. But I want to fill you in a little background about the judge first. You see, there was this judge and Jesus called him an unrighteous judge. And the judge said he was, uh, 
He neither feared God nor regarded man. William Barclay in his study uh, Bible tells us that uh, this clearly was not a Jewish judicial matter because in the Jewish judicial, judicial system, there were always three judges. One was selected by the plaintiff, one by the defendant, and a neutral judge. And this was a single judge. And so it must have been a Roman magistrate. And since there was only that one judge, Barclay concludes that he was probably a judge who was willing to bend the rules. He was willing to be bought. He was willing to be influenced. And the Jewish people called people like him rubber judges. Then in this story, there is this widow, and she's being governed by the law of Moses. And the law of Moses dealt more kindly with women and widows than most other nations and other societies did because it was a societal thing. There was no provision in that society for the care of widows and women, and they left it up to the family. And when it was left up to the family, it was usually left up to the eldest son. And that's why the eldest son got the extra share of the inheritance of the family so that he could take care of the widowed mother. And if he didn't have any money or didn't get to take care of the estate, there was no care for her, so she was left on her own. You see, there was no Social Security check to be mailed out on the third of every month for elderly and women at that time. And she was really up against it. And we may see her as a symbol. In this story, she is a symbol, I think, of all poor and defenseless. No one to stand up with her. No one to be there before the judge. And there this judge was looking for a bribe. She was defenseless, totally defenseless, except she had one weapon. Her weapon was persistence. And for a while, the judge refused all of her pleading, but she kept nagging and nagging, and she finally wore him out. And he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor regard man, yet because of this window, this widow is bugging me so much, I will vindicate her, or she will wear me out by her continual begging. And since Luke says that uh, Jesus told this parable, and, and in quotes for Luke, he says, to the effect that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. When I wonder, why don't my prayers get answered I need to ask am I giving up too soon am I losing heart Luke reports another parable in the 11th chapter of this same book in it in that we read that uh, Jesus tells the story of a friend who comes to a man's house at midnight and he wants to borrow those three loaves of bread if you remember that story and uh, this friend he this man had a friend who had just arrived on a journey and there was no bread or anything to feed him in the house so the guy goes to his friend's house and the neighbor put him off he says no don't bother me the door is now shut and the children are with me in bed Notice the use of that word children. He's not talking about little mishkas. He's talking about us, children of God, his family. And that's how they referred to them many times. So he had good reason to protest. And I want to describe the, his problem to you. You see, this man didn't live in a three bedroom rambling house. He had just one room. In those days, you would probably call it a split-level hut because the lower level and there was a higher level. On the lower level, 
is where the donkeys and all of the animals and the dogs and all the rest stayed and were fed. The higher level, probably raised a foot or so, was where all of the adults stayed. They did their cooking, they ate there, they slept there. So at night they'd unroll their mats, they'd lay down on the floor, and they'd go to sleep. And in some cases there might be as many as three and four generations of aunts and widows and people. And so when the guy co comes and he says, look, the children are all in bed and I don't want to get out because I don't want to have to step on anybody. He literally means that because the floor is covered with bodies. So he has a real good reason for not getting up and getting the man the bread that he needs, even though he has plenty of food in his cabinet. But you see, the man outside wouldn't quit. He kept persevering. And Jesus observed, I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. Catch that. He's not going to get up and give him anything because he's his friend. But because of his nagging, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. You see, in both parables, Jesus argued from the lesser to the greater. He doesn't liken God to the lesser people in the stories. As a matter of fact, he contrasts him to them. If the neighbor was aroused at midnight and the judge who cared neither for God nor regarded man, if these people would eventually give in to the petitioner who was persistent, won't the heavenly Father be all the more likely to do the same for you and for me? And won't he be especially more likely to do that because in these stories he has shown that he does not disregard our pleadings as a nuisance. In fact, God welcomes our pleadings. He encourages them. He wants us to keep asking. So after the parable of the pounding on the door at midnight, Jesus go on, goes on to say, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. You see, in that simple language of Jesus that Luke uses, it actually reads, keep on asking, keep on seeking, you'll find it. Keep on knocking, the door will open. In other words, don't quit. I am hearing you. I am listening. In Matthew and in Mark, there's really a sketch of how to do it, how to hang on, how to keep asking, how to keep on knocking. And it's that story about the woman. You see, being a woman in itself was a bad deal. That was against her. How could a woman in that culture approach such a man in public? After all, she was from the district of Tyre and Sidon, which is now a part of Lebanon. She was an outsider. On top of that, she was a Canaanite, and that was the race that occupied the promised land where uh, Joshua crossed the Jordan to take them away from him. She was a mortal enemy of the children of Israel. And like the widow in Jesus' parable, she had nothing going for her except persistence in the face of huge obstacles. She was pleading with Jesus for her daughter who was possessed by a demon. I think she must have felt that our Lord was ignoring her. I can relate. I can relate. I've felt many times that he was ignoring me. There are times when I must have given up praying too soon because it did seem that God was ignoring me. 
There are times in life when I've lost heart. But this Canaanite woman kept on asking, kept on seeking, kept on knocking. And the disciples grew sick of her. And they said, get rid of this past Jesus. Then Jesus said something that should really have demolished her. He said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the children of Israel. Boy, that doesn't sound like the Jesus I know. I'm only sent to minister to certain people. I was only sent to, for the lost children of Israel. Wouldn't that demolish you if Christ told you that? Not you. I don't think that's what he meant, folks. In fact, this woman continued to kneel down. She continued to beg. And in that process, we kind of get an inkling of the master teacher that Jesus was. What he was trying to do was to draw her out, to keep her thinking and to keep her talking. And she took the bait big time. She kept arguing and she kept nagging. And in the end, her persistence paid off. And in her persistence paying off, Jesus exclaimed, O oh woman, you of great faith, be it done for you as you desire. And the Gospels report that her daughter was healed instantly. You think maybe there's something to this, giving up on praying too soon? We get tired, we get discouraged, we give up. No wonder Jesus remarked at the end of this passage, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? You see, we need the company of believers. We need them to encourage us and to continue to remind us of these things so that we can see that, yes, prayers are answered. Persistence does pay off. Don't lose heart. We also need the company of believers to remind us of God's plans in the assembly of worship and in our other contacts with our Christian communities and communities of saint. We're reminded of various instances that happened. I'm reminded of a biblical instance that happened where prayer was much in the forefront. That's why Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, let me get out of this. If there's any way in the world for this not to happen, God, I don't want it to happen. Yet, thy will be done. Did he get out of it? No, he sure didn't. Was God's will done? Yep, yeah, you bet it was. Did God's kingdom come? Well, that's a subject for future sermons. Would we have wanted it any other way? We could have written a very romantic story about that garden, how it ended all in sweetness and light. But you know, persistence is not the only issue that's involved in our prayer life. Lack of persistence is the only reason mentioned in this particular gospel for today. The reason the parable was told in the first place was that we ought always to pray, always pray, and never, never, ever lose heart. Will you join me in prayer? Lord God, as our theme from our most recent General Assembly as Disciples of Christ has laid out for us the theme, teach us to pray. Help us, God, to focus our needs on you 
and our hope on your love. Let us accept that you hear all prayers and that whatever and whenever and wherever your answers may be, they are always the best for all concerned. Like the prayers of Jesus in the garden, we know that you will hear and answer, even though we may not understand or even like your answer. Let us end our prayer as Jesus ended his prayer. Yet thy will be done. Amen.